Hello, welcome back to the Halion 6 tutorial series. Today we're going to finish off uh, our examination of wavetable uh, synthesis with an examination of a few bits and bobs that we haven't already dealt with. And to do that we need our wavetable and we need a sound. Drag that one in. Okay, so we're very quickly going to set up some markers and we'll just give it equal distribution. And we can see that the last 10 of them we don't really care about. Most of these are empty. So I'm just going to multi-select all of these and delete them. And so the, the part of the sample that we're interested in is now all, all the stuff with the frequency in. And let's see what that sounds like. Okay, typical wave table fare. Now you can see that it's a really quiet sample, so we'll normalize it. That's more interesting. So a couple of the um, the phase options that we haven't dealt, dealt with yet, I'll just cover those very quickly. Reset phase to zero is pretty straightforward. Every phase just always starts at, at zero and you get quite a harsh sound with that. With align phases uh, to sequence, which is the one that we typically want if we want a, a more expansive kind of non-artifact laden sound, that's very nice. But when we've normalized a sequence and we've made everything as loud as we can, there are still sonic artifacts in there. And so we can click this button here, interpolate phases. If I turn that on, it has a CPU overhead. So it's one of those things that you might have to sacrifice if your machine is struggling. But now we get cross fades for both amplitude and phase. So we have the, the, the maximum smoothing effect and yeah, it is actually smoother. Without the interpolation on, I can hear like pulses as it passes through the waves. And it's definitely smoother with that, with that setting on. Now this value here, fundamental frequency of the spectrum in Hertz, has no significance until we uh, jump over to the zone tab to have a look at some of our form and settings. Now what formant uh, is all about is really um, accentuating particular harmonic ranges that we, we typically interpret it as the, the human vowel sounding kinds of things. You get the, the A-E-I-O-U sort of effect. But really it's just concentration of harmonics around a particular zone and it doesn't actually matter what key you press. It's, it's a, a specific frequency based kind of concept. And the reason why that's significant is because when we go back to our wavetable, this is the fundamental frequency around which the formant settings wrap themselves. It's easy to show you rather than talk about it. So here we have our C3. If I go over to the zone and engage formant, So wherever I press my keys, I still get that same frequency being overlaid on top of the played note. Now we can set the fundamental frequency of each of these waves individually. So if I select them all and set them all to 20, Set my formant nice and high. Now if I change the fundamental frequency of each of these waves, it changes the effect that the formant filter is having on the waves themselves. If I turn formant off, This has no effect at all. So this is this is basically being used as a seed into the formant algorithm to determine what offsets it needs to apply to the harmonics.
only when we turn it on do we actually get any difference out of that value. So when you're doing your form and sweeps, you'll set different values here to get whatever effect that it is you're trying to find. It's a much brighter, much sharper sound. Lots of the values at the zone level are pretty obvious and we can really fly over them. This allows us to have a master octave tuning on the sound. Of course, it's semitones at a time. Fine. Uh, takes you in uh, 100 cent steps up a single semitone. With free phase, basically, it, it's like an analog synthesizer where the phase is constantly oscillating in the background. When you press a key, it just jumps on the bandwagon. Note that the visual representation of the wave if we switch to random phase, it doesn't matter how many times you press a key on the keyboard, it always visually appears to be exactly the same wave that's being played, but it is actually randomly choosing a new place in the wave at which to start um, its cycle each time. If we switch to fixed phase, we do get a graphical representation because now it's like a, a, an absolute visible um, difference and so if I move this forwards then we can see this is where in the in this this is still wave number one because here we are at the beginning of the wave but this is where it will begin its playback from and so if you're using multiple oscillators that could potentially have phasing issues this is where you can set their phases arbitrarily this is an overall output level And this is our pan. All right. In the main wavetable page, we have uh, the option to set our start position, but we have a little bit more control over it from here. Here is the same start position value. So you can see me stepping through the waves of the wavetable there. But we can also specify a random position at which to start and the direction through which to um, to pass. So if I set this to minus 100, it'll travel backwards through the wavetable, which means I need to start at the end. And that is the same as that. This is a big deal, the multi-oscillator. So if we specify, well, let's hear the sound. Okay, now start bringing in multiple oscillators. G-tune them slightly. And now... Adds so much thickness to the sound. Spread separates the playback heads so that they're playing at different points in the wavetable. I'm going to be gentle with this one. Because while it's really cool to have like three different places in the wavetable where it's playing its sounds, now that we've like disconnected those three oscillators, it really is effectively acting as three separate synthesizers rather than the the, the the more harmonious effect we had when all of the waves were like very closely coupled but that's not saying you can't do it just introducing an awful lot, a lot more harmonic variance by doing that but that's you know that's absolutely fine now then, up until like three and a half videos into the wavetable synthesizer, we've only dealt with a single oscillator. Ignore the fact that the multi-oscillator is a separate thing, that's just replicating what we've already got. But we do actually have a second completely independent oscillator in the same wavetable synth. And these little buttons up here are really important for actually controlling these things. So I'm going to turn oscillator one off. So everything that we've just done is now gone and we have no sound. I'm going to turn oscillator 2 on. Let's go over to the wavetable, 
select oscillator 2 and it's completely blank we don't have anything in it well let's put something in it that's as good as anything chuck that in create some markers let's see what that sounds like Speed it up a bit. Normalize it. And cut a load of stuff away from this really long tail when all of these samples start to fade away. Chop all that off. Now, let's alternate. Okay, so within seconds we have a working synth. Go over to our zone tab, turn multi on, put the detune. Let's go over to our envelope page and add a, a nice long release onto that. And now let's bring oscillator two back. So now it's gonna play both of those waves, uh, wave tables simultaneously. And for the first time in a couple of hours <laughs> of wavetable synthesizer videos, we actually have something that sounds pretty goddamn awesome. Everything that I've done during this video has been kind of random, really. I've just been throwing stuff in and doing it for the sake of the tutorial. But here we are. Doesn't stop there. Let's bring a sub in. Let's have a nice big fat sign sub. Tiny little bit of noise. What kind of noise? Well, it's Hallian. Of course, all of the noise. Shall we have shall we have orange noise? Why the hell not? All of this stuff's still going on. can you not love this synthesizer it's just utterly ridiculous gorgeous though it is i'm going to take all that stuff away again and go back down to just oscillator one jump over to our wave table and now we're going to have a look at it visually so we have two different ways that we can um, visualize uh, the passage of time through a wave table uh, 3d and 2d so here's our 3d vision so it's literally, if I just slow it down a bit, select all the waves, double them, double them. Yeah, that'll do. So the reason it's such a, like a bottom of the ocean kind of seascape is because you have all the crossfades. It's not one wave suddenly turning into another because they all morph then there are no hard edges, everything is smooth. Kind of fantastic to look at it in that respect. And two dimensionally, this is simply every wave morphing, 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 morphing. So it gets to the end and then it jumps back on itself. 
very last thing to show you is how to plug the mod matrix in. So I've just set um, oscillator one's loop mode to alternate, so it's going to go backwards and forwards now. And what we're going to do is go into our mod matrix, choose our LFO, which is just a simple one hertz sine wave, map it to wavetable one's speed. And now, oops, need to increase the amount, modulation depth. You can see it oscillating between very slow and very fast. If we pull the LFO speed right down, different parameters we have available to us in our modulation matrix is obviously pretty comprehensive. So that's wavetable synthesis as implemented by Halley and hope you enjoyed this little mini series within the big series and if you did please consider subscribing hit notifications and then you'll find out when episode 1,400,000 comes out. Hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching.